So I'm going to give you some help on how to do lab six, which is size up our solar system. At first glance, students get a little concerned that they're going to have to do a bunch of mathematical calculations. That is certainly not the case for this lab. In fact, it is as easy as this. When you click on the link in the web page that I provided in the lab folder, you enter in a size for your sun. I mean, just put in a random number. It's going to populate when you hit return everything from Mercury down to Pluto. Automatically. You don't have to do a darn thing with math. The only thing I'm going to tell you is you need to use some good old-fashioned common sense. If I have a sun that is the size of this little drink coaster, I'm going to have a microscopic set of planets. So you need to choose a large sun. So some students are like, well, how am I going to figure out what the size of it is? You're going to do a little bit of work to figure that out. And you could use a known size of a building. Maybe you could choose the science building at MCC. Maybe you could choose the American Museum of Natural History. They have, for this very lab, a solar system in their museum, and they have the size of their sun already set. That would help you scale it down. So what do you do once you've entered this into the table you see right here, this interactive table? You're going to take that data and you're going to use this column right here, the body diameter in inches, not in millimeters. If you do it in millimeters, everything's going to be microscopic. You need to use inches. So what happens once you get this information? So if, if I have a sun that's 720 inches in diameter, that's how wide it is, then I'm looking for a shape that fits that size. So that's why I'd say if you can find a designated size that you already know for the sun, a building, a size, maybe your house, then you would be able to better uh, find a shape that fits the diameter. So let's say Mercury is 2.5 inches. So a really great way to do that would be to take a little ruler and put it next to your item. So maybe I'm using for uh, Mercury, I might use the cap of these vitamins that's about two and a half inches. And I just put a little ruler here next to it showing its diameter. Going on to Venus, it's 6.2 inches. Same thing there. And you're choosing items from your house where you work, wherever it might be that you're doing the assignment, where you're not going to find it is on the internet. So I'm not going to allow any of your features to be done with a photo from the internet. So you might wonder, where am I going to get the photos from? A majority of us have phones that have photos on it. If not, use a camera. Most everyone has these tools today. If you don't, ask somebody who does and plan ahead. So the cool part about this lab is once you get all of these items together that are in your house, I would encourage you, if you can, kind of take your pictures or the physical items that you've chosen them and line them up together and see the size differences. So you might be using a trampoline in your yard for Pluto, I mean for Jupiter, let's say. And then you have a tractor for Saturn. I'm just using some examples. Obviously, you're not going to be able to pick up those and move them. But if you could kind of find some items that you can group together and see how very different the terrestrial versus the Jovian planets are, you're going to have a major takeaway from this lab. So what are the required elements for this lab? There's multiple parts. The first one is a hypothesis statement. This is what gives students heartburn besides finding the items in their house because they're like, I don't know what a hypothesis statement is. So I'm going to give you a hypothesis statement and say that I'm not saying that the person that did this hypothesis statement did a great job. They did a, an okay job. And the paragraph below is somebody's guess, uh, their post hypothesis statement where they use the data they collected from the lab to answer it. So scientific method is just that. We run experiments in order to answer questions. So basically a hypothesis is a question put in a, a statement format. And let's just say that I'll use my cats. 
all cats have knobby tails. Well, that's not a very good hypothesis, but it's a hypothesis. Well, I know that's not true because I have one cat that's a minx and one cat that has a regular tail. So the one that's a minx has a knobby tail. So a better hypothesis might be that some species of cats have long tails, some have half tails, some have knobby tails, and why? So what I would do in my scientific data collection is study cats of all of those types and determine why it, it happens. Why do they have tails that are different? In this case, for the planetary, uh, that looking at size of planets, you're trying to determine how are terrestrial planets and Jovian planets similar and different. So don't do any research before you start. It's okay to have a hypothesis that's incorrect when you begin. In fact, it is probably the norm in science that we start off with what we think is right, and then the scientific data completely shows something different. That is not wrong. In fact, it's scientific method. But the key is that you're going to visit your work after you've gone through the process of collecting all of these items. And in addition to that, I want you to space your items apart going back to this. You can see how they're scaled and feet from each other. If you could set your items apart distance-wise, you're going to have a takeaway in this lab that is fantastic. Now, what goes into your lab form? So in this case, this student did a really good job for the sun. They included the distance, all of this data that comes from, again, this. And they put all that information there. And then they gave a reference to the size of the figure that is being used for their sun. And I took out who it belongs to. You can just see the last name's Griffin. There's a ton of different Griffins. This is a different student. They used their house as a, a sun, okay? But notice one thing they did really well in both cases. They documented where the photos came from. They generated it. They didn't find anything off the internet. They used items from their home and took the pictures themselves. That's what you need to do. So here is their mercury. So compare the size of this little remote control to the size of your house. That shows you a perspective scaled down based on coming back to this particular chart they chose the house as their sun, that was 720 inches, and then they had mercury, which was 2.5 inches. So that's how they came up with these different topics or choices for photos. So the last thing I'll leave you with on this lab is that you need to address uh, Pluto. And there's a lot that's happened with Pluto over the last 10, 15 years about its classification and you're going to need to vote. And you'll understand when you get into the directions what to do, but don't leave out Pluto, please. Include Pluto. And if you go too small of a sun from the get-go, Pluto, I promise you, will be a microscopic pen. Remember, you got to take a photo of everything you do, so make sure that it is a big enough sun that even Pluto can be taken with a picture and then inserted into your lab form.